Welcome back to the Clean My Space channel. My name is Melissa Maker and I am an accidental cleaning expert, which means I hate cleaning, but I love finding the most efficient and effective ways to get the job done right the first time. And here we are in my front entryway because we are talking about the way your home smells in this video. And more specifically, if your home smells bad, because you probably want to solve that problem. So in this video, I've pulled together a whole bunch of different tips, tricks, and ideas on ways that you can make your home smell better. And it doesn't involve fancy products and expensive things. A lot of these are DIY inexpensive solutions to help make your home smell wonderful. Because after all, sometimes you walk into your home and you don't even realize what it smells like, but then when a guest comes and their face gets all, you might want to think twice about that. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel, and I wanted to let you know that on cleanmyspace.com, we are currently having a sale on all of our eBooks, including our 50 DIY cleaning recipe eBooks. So if you love doing the DIY, you're gonna love this eBook. Now, you will also be able to get your hands on a free copy of our 59 point checklist for homes on certain purchases, so you can check all of that out in the link down below. Smells don't just appear and disappear out of nowhere. There's always a cause, a reason why something smells. It could be a short-term thing or a long-term problem, but either way, when there's a smell, it's a symptom and it's your job to find the root cause. So without telling you to be like a, a dog, like you have to walk around your house and just start lifting things up, looking under couches. This morning we're potty training my daughter. I was in the bathroom and I literally got on my hands and knees and looked under the bathroom vanity just to make sure there wasn't a rogue baby wipe under there. You've got to do your homework to find the source of that smell. And then once you find it, it could be as easy as picking something up and tossing it away or it could be indicative of a more systemic issue that has to be fixed. For example, a mold problem or a, mo a moisture problem. Behind me is my bathroom. A lot of you guys know Chad and I have separate bathrooms, which we believe is the secret to a good marriage. But <laughs> one secret you can't keep in a bathroom are the smells that come out of that bathroom. Now, of course, there are the typical toilet smells. We all know about those and we know what to do about those. But there are some other more cunning smells, odors that live in bathrooms that need to be dealt with, but we might not necessarily know where those come from. Now, there could be a couple of places and your first culprit and your most likely culprit is probably the drain, whether it's in the shower slash bathtub or in your sink. The drain not only catches things like your hair and well, anything else that comes out of your body, it's absolutely disgusting. So if you do notice that there is an odor emanating from your bathroom that you just can't seem to get rid of, I highly recommend you get one of those drain cleaners. It's a long skinny thing. You can pick it up from any hardware store. You can also get an enzyme based drain cleaner, which is effectively a product that you dump down your drain. I have to say, I think the extraction method is definitely more effective, although it is way more disgusting. Longtime fans of Clean My Space know I love essential oils and I use them wherever I can. And you can use them to help deodorize and spruce up any space in your home as well. And it's quite simple to do. If you have a nebulizer, you can add essential oils to that. You can make your own reed diffuser. We have a video on that, which I will link down below, but some easy, simple things you can do that really require no effort at all. Just take a little cotton ball, put it in a bowl and add about 15 drops of your favorite essential oil or blend of essential oils and plant that anywhere in your house. It'll just help freshen up the space and gently disperse that smell. Every time you change out your furnace filter, drop five or 10 drops of your favorite essential oil right onto the furnace filter. An easy, inexpensive, well, free thing that you can do to make your house smell great is to open the windows. It's something that Chad and I do as frequently as we feel reasonable, given that we pay to use HVAC in this house. But I think that airing out your house on a very regular basis helps to keep it smelling fresh and clean. The situation is normally we separate out our compostable or live or wet garbage 
from our dry garbage or anything that can't be composted. That said, both of those still smell. Now, if your garbage is rather large like this one is and you're putting lots of live or wet garbage in there, it'll build up. You're not gonna change your garbage bag as frequently and your kitchen or your garage, wherever it is that you keep your garbage, will just start to smell. Now, of course, if it's hot outside or the temperatures are warmer in your home, that issue is just exacerbated. Now, a good habit would be to change your garbage every night before you go to bed. So wherever you keep your wet or your live compostable garbage, you wanna change that out every night just to avoid anything from building up. Because really what's happening there, things are decomposing and decomposition stinks. Now I know your shoes aren't smelly, so this is for your friend that has smelly shoes. If they, want to deodorize their shoes, they can take something like a coffee filter, a couple pieces of paper towel, or even a piece of old t-shirt that's cut off. You just need a piece of semi-permeable cloth. And then you're gonna to add to that a half a cup of baking soda right in the center. Then you'll gather all of the sides together. You'll secure it with an elastic, I mean, your friend will secure it with an elastic band and throw it in their shoe. You can obviously make a pair of them and let that sit for a day, two, a week, a month, whatever. Just keep it sitting there, throw them in whenever those shoes aren't being worn. And what will happen is the baking soda will start to eat away at the odors in the shoe, the boot, the slipper. Whatever it is, it's gonna start smelling better and your friend will thank you for the tip. In a small enclosed space like this, if one thing smells, everything starts to smell. Couple that with the fact that there's very little airflow going on in here. You have to be very careful about what you're keeping in your closet because anything that's in there is going to affect the smell of all your other clothing. So if you want your clean clothes to smell good, do not keep your dirty clothes or your dirty garments in the same space. If you're having guests come over and you really wanna up that scent signature game in your home, particularly in the front entryway or the area where your guests are going to be hanging out the most, you might wanna make your own room spray. And there's a super simple recipe for it, three quarters cup of water, two tablespoons of rubbing alcohol, and several drops of your favorite essential oils. You can obviously use more if you want a stronger scent. I would say the minimum would be about five to 10 drops and the max would be like 40. Either way, shake it up, keep it in a bottle and give it a good spritz. Now it's not like a commercial air freshener where the scent is gonna last for a really long time. This is natural stuff. So it will fade quicker than that. But if you wanna refresh it, you can do so throughout the day or the night. And it's pretty easy to do and very simple to make. Everything falls to the floor. Dead skin cells, dander, pet hair, you name it. It's on the floor, which is why you've gotta stay on top of your floors if you wanna stay on top of odors. Now carpets, obviously you just have to vacuum, but for hard floor surfaces, you really wanna make sure that you're not only sweeping or vacuuming, but you're also mopping fairly regularly. Now for me, I like to balance out how much mopping I do, because I have a lot of hardwood in the house. I don't wanna over mop but I stay on top by vacuuming regularly. Now, when I do mop, I do that because I wanna, you know, obviously I will spot clean any spills, but I wanna get rid of any oils that come off of our feet or our cat's feet or anything that has fallen that I'm not able to see because over time that adds to odors. Now, the recipe that I like to use is one and three quarters cup water to a quarter cup rubbing alcohol and 10 drops of essential oil I really like using grapefruit on the floor, but again, just check in with yourself and see what you love. Then you'll shake that solution up, and in this case, I'm using a microfiber pad mop. So what I'll do is I'll spray a certain area, and then I'm using the W pattern or the S pattern, depending on how I feel that day. Uh, I'm gonna clean the area, let it dry, and move on to the next area by spraying, and then mopping, spraying, and then mopping, and so on. There are some alternative ways that you can deal with odors. First up is steam cleaning. You know I've talked about steam cleaning for a long time. The downside, and I'm very happy to share this with you right up front, is you have to invest in a steam cleaner and you've gotta take the time to learn how to use it. And if you have kind of a not great steam cleaner, it's not gonna get you the results you want. So it really is an investment. But let me explain to you how and why it works. 
Inside the steam cleaner, you've got this kettle-like situation that just, it's kind of like a pressure cooker, it just boils up all this water, generates steam, and when you press the trigger, it shoots out steam that's supposed to be very, very hot. And the idea is that it's hot enough to melt things away, kill bacteria, so on and so forth. So what's cool about it is if you have, say, a soft surface that's smelly, you can kind of blast it with steam. And the idea is that it refreshes that surface. Option two is using an enzyme cleaner. Now, the way enzyme cleaners work is you spray them onto a surface, you allow them to sit for a little bit, and the enzymes which are kind of like what's in your saliva to help break down food, start to attack and break down the source of the grease, grime, or odor, whatever it is. And enzymes, what's cool about them is they're designed to deal with certain things. So you can pick up very um, siloed enzymes. You know, this one is for pet stains. This one is for grease. They're, they're really neat, but again, it's got a bit of a learning curve and you have to have that product at home to deal with that particular issue. I like having enzymes on hand because it helps me deal with the potty training that we're going through right now. Kick things off by emptying your garbage. Obviously you want it to be nice and clear for you to get to work. And once that's done, you can take an all purpose cleaner. And here I'm just using warm water and a tablespoon of dish soap and spraying it around the exterior of the garbage can. That can sort of do its thing. It's gonna get rid of any buildup that has sort of fallen when things have been loosely tossed into the trash. Then I'll move to the interior. I'm gonna spray that down as well with the same mixture and to get rid of the odors and to scratch off some of that really cruddy, garbagey stuff, I'm gonna to toss in about half a cup of baking soda and just let that do its thing. The baking soda is designed to remove any of the buildup, but the key part here is the baking soda also helps deodorize. And anything that can neutralize garbage odors, that is perfectly welcome in my house. Make sure you spray the interior really well. You want it dripping, basically. The exterior, of course, you can get started on by just using an S pattern and wiping it down. The inside of the garbage can, you want that to sit for about five to 10 minutes. Reason being, the baking soda really needs time to do its work. Then take a good quality sponge, but one that you're not gonna be too sad to part with, because I can assure you, you're probably gonna toss this one afterward and start scrubbing your garbage can from the top working your way down to the bottom. I'm gonna make sure that I'm also getting the lid of my garbage can as well, making sure that you get all of that crud in there, rinsing your sponge as needed, and of course, ensuring that you don't fall into the bottom of your garbage can. Now it's time to rinse out the sudsy mess. So depending on the size of your garbage can, you can either do this in your kitchen sink, obviously you will clean your sink after, or you can do it outside where you have a garden hose. Then you wanna make sure that you dry it really, really well. Now, if you have a metal or a stainless steel garbage can like I do, you'll wanna make sure that the exterior looks nice and shiny. So if it needs a second go around with a microfiber cloth and some all-purpose cleaner, definitely go for it. A shiny garbage can is a clean garbage can. When you actually are ready to put the bag back, before you do so, crumple up a few pieces of newspaper and pop that at the bottom of the garbage can. The reason you wanna do that is because newspaper not only will help to keep odors at bay, but it will also absorb those classy garbage drippings and that can be tossed and replaced. And that's a much easier way to keep your garbage can odor-free and grime-free for longer. Speaking of which, you wanna clean your garbage can at least twice a year. I recommend doing it fall and spring. That way you don't have to do it in the heat of the summer where your garbage can reeks and in the middle of winter when you're freezing your buns off trying to rinse out a garbage can. When you're cleaning your outdoor garbage containers, obviously the best time to do this is right after garbage day. You are going to make up a solution in a spray bottle of equal parts dish soap and white vinegar. This is a really powerful cleaner. It can degrease, it can deodorize, and trust me, your container is gonna need it. Take it to an area that you have a lot of free space to work in, and obviously the fact that you're in open air is great because this mixture does smell a little bit, and you're gonna do a three phase spray. And the reason we do this is because we're gonna give the product the opportunity to really work, then we're gonna hit it again with more product, and then we're gonna wait, and we're gonna hit it again with more product, and we're gonna wait, then we're gonna scrub. You're gonna see that the product 
really helps break down that grease and grime, makes it so much easier to clean, which means less elbow grease for you. So mix up that solution, spray your entire garbage can outside, inside, top to bottom, wait five minutes, then come back, do it all over again. Wait five minutes, come back, do it once more. And after five minutes, you're gonna fill a bucket with some hot soapy water and you'll just start to scrub. Now, it does require some elbow grease, but the fact that we spent that 15 minutes pre-treating is really gonna reduce the amount of scrub time you have. Once you're done scrubbing, and again, don't skimp here, this is you know an important job, you're gonna give the garbage can a really good rinse out with a hose. When that's done, put it in a sunny area and let it dry. I recommend doing this twice a year. Again, fall and spring are a perfect time. Garbage cans are kind of like toilets. They have a pretty thankless job and they get thrown a lot of crap. It's really important that we take good care of them because a smelly garbage can is a huge turnoff. And well, it's a turnoff for us, but it really attracts the wrong kind of things, if you know what I'm talking about. So make sure that you give your garbage can a little bit of TLC. Trust me, it goes a long way. You will feel so much cleaner and better for the fact that you have a clean garbage receptacle. This is a really obvious masking of smells, but it's a good one, especially around holiday season. And that is doing the stovetop simmer. Now it might feel inconceivable to do this in the summer, but as we move into cooler temperatures and I'm crying inside saying that because I am a forever summer person, but I'm also a realist, I know what's coming. So in the colder months, people are sort of cozying up spending more time indoors because we haven't been doing enough of that this year. But you kind of want to flag your mind that the holidays are coming. So you can get some water boiling on the stove top. Stove top. Now, if you have a, a slow cooker or a crock pot, you can do this in there as well. Basically, you add water and then you can throw in a combination of any fruits, herbs, citrus that you like, and you can kind of let them just simmer and go to town. So what I like to do is I like to bring the water up to a boil, throw everything in there, and then bring it down to a simmer. Now, if it's stovetop, you've got to keep an eye on it. So my trick is I set a timer for, say, every 30 minutes, and I just make sure the water level is good. I'll add more water as needed, and that way you never have to worry about a problem. But if you're using a crock pot, you don't have to worry about this. You kind of put the water in, you put your stuff to simmer or cook, and you walk away and you do what you got to do. Hard surfaces in our homes like flooring and countertops aren't porous, which means they don't generally absorb stains and odors. And that is good for you to know because when it comes to the main source of odors in our homes, we've got to blame it on the soft surfaces, the carpets, drapes, upholstery, bedding, linens, clothing, the things that are nice, comfy, cozy, cushy places for dust and debris and odor molecules to land and settle and build a life. So when it comes to bad odors in your home, one of the first places you want to tackle are those soft surfaces. And there are a couple of ways that you can do this. The ideal thing to do here is to launder those surfaces if you can. That means, um, you know, stripping your linens, changing them regularly. I used to own a rental property many years ago and I will never forget the first time I walked into that place when we were looking to buy it. And the thing that hit me was the smell coming from the bedrooms of unwashed linens. And I know that smell, it's a very unique smell because I have all this experience in cleaning. It does not smell good. So soft surfaces can really make or break the way a space smells. The other thing that you can do, and this makes a huge difference, is vacuum. It's not only good for reducing dust in your home, but by removing dust, the matrix that is dust, that little you know grid combination of hair, dead skin cells, all that other stuff, traps odor particles, and that kind of makes your home smelly too. So if you can get rid of the dust, you can get rid of that stuffy smell. You don't often see me standing by this particular door because it's awful in there. This is the storage area under our stairs in the basement. Everything goes in here, no matter how many times we try to clean it out. It just seems to get chock full of scary, terrifying things that we never use and never want to think about again. Anyway, it is no excuse. It should not look like that. But the reason I'm pointing this area out is because there can often be 
odors in there, particularly moldy and mildewy smells. Now, you hear me talk about mold and mildew all the time, but if you're wondering what that actually smells like, it kind of smells like soil or like a forest. It's like you, you dug a little hole, you stuck your nose in there and you took a deep breath. That's really what mold and mildew smells like because what exists out there in nature is existing right in here if there's a moisture issue. So you have to stay on top of things, do a little visual inspection. If you notice that there are any leaks or any visual mold or mildew, you must call in an expert to deal with that. It's a serious issue. If it's just a little bit or a little musty area that's a little bit smelly, you can clean it with a product like Concrobe but again, if it's something big and serious, you do want a professional to take care of it. That is not a DIY project. Now these things have different names, but you should be looking for something that's called an ultrasonic diffuser if you want one of these. I really like them because of course they help add a little bit of moisture to the air. They're not full blown humidifiers but they certainly do add a bit of moisture, but more importantly, they can help diffuse a scent through your room beautifully. So you essentially fill it up with water, you add about 10 drops of your favorite essential oils or a mix, and you just turn it on, set it and forget it, and it just spreads joy all throughout your space. Now, we used to have a larger one in our bedroom. A lot of you asked about it. I'll link to it down below. It's called the Humio, it's made by Tribest. And we just changed it up in our bedroom. We found it was a little too big for the space, so we actually got a smaller one. I'll link that one down below for you as well. Either way, we use it every day. I'm often changing up the scents, and I love changing them up for the season. And because I am such a fan of essential oils, I am always experimenting and having fun with it. Perhaps you've seen the commercials where that sassy English lady tells you about that product, which will make it seem like you didn't stink up the bathroom after you drop the kids off at the pool. That stuff ain't cheap, and you'd be surprised just how easy it is to make your very own version at home. So today, I'm gonna show you how to make your very own DIY poopery spray. Here's what you're going to need. Essential oils. The scents that you choose are up to you. Let's face it, anything is going to be better than the smell we're trying to cover up. I'm using peppermint and rosemary. Vegetable glycerin. If you don't have any already, don't worry. You can find it at most health food stores. And of course, you can order it online. Rubbing alcohol, a perennial favorite here around the CMS HQ. Food coloring. This one is optional, but it comes in handy when you're spraying the mixture into a toilet. That way you can see what kind of coverage you're getting. And finally, some simple H2O. We're going to mix these up in very small batches for two reasons. First, the mixture can become less effective over time, which is why less is better. And secondly, let's be honest, who wants to schlep a big old bottle of poo spray around with them? We're going to mix a half cup of water along with two tablespoons of rubbing alcohol and three tablespoons of vegetable glycerin. And now for the really important part, I'm going to be adding 40 drops of essential oil. For this combination, I'm using 20 drops of peppermint, 20 drops of rosemary, but you do what you like. And then you wanna use a dark food coloring, ideally green or blue, and you wanna put several drops, like maybe 10 or 12. Then just give the bottle a good shake. And now you're good to go, literally. To use the spray, simply spray it into the toilet before you sit down and make sure there's a nice, even greasy coating across the entire surface of the water. That's why you're using the food coloring. It'll let you know when you're all covered. The secret to how this stuff works is actually pretty cool. Here, let me show you. Imagine this is your toilet bowl. Just bear with me. The essential oils, vegetable glycerin, and rubbing alcohol create a wonderful smelly layer of oily goodness, which simply rests atop the water in the toilet. And then when your deposit drops through, it gets trapped under this oily layer, along with all the unpleasant smells of said deposit. Science. So there you go, my friends. All right, well, there you go. The next time you're at a house party or at the office, and then there's that one tiny bathroom that 14 people have to share, worry not, because even when you have to battle the fudge dragon, you now know you can leave the bathroom with no stinky evidence behind. Air purification is becoming something that is increasingly more talked about and more popular. I've seen a huge uptick in the amount of products that have come out over the past few years. 
that are air purifiers. And it's important because the quality of the air in your home really does affect the way that you breathe and function and live. And if you're somebody who has allergies or asthma or you know a, a host of other health issues that are affected by indoor air quality, an air purifier can make all the difference. But even on the most basic level, an air purifier helps your home smell better because essentially what it's doing is it's bringing air in through one side, it's filtering it on the inside, and then it's shooting out fresh, clean air that has been purified. There are no contaminants in there. So that is going to mean that your house smells a lot better because things like dander and odors and dead skin cells and dirt, like all those little micro things that you don't see but are floating around in your air are now being cleaned in this filter. So if you feel that your house is clean but you just can't get rid of that stale, musty odor, you might really wanna think about an air purifier. So we've talked about our soft surfaces, we've talked about our hard surfaces, but now we're gonna talk about kind of plasticky surfaces and other alternative surfaces or spaces that we deal with that get smelly. And to deal with these, we can use pantry staples like vinegar and baking soda. Vinegar is great for cleaning or deodorizing things like plastic bins. So if you have a smelly container or an organics bin or a garbage can, you can just soak that with white vinegar and vinegar does a great job at removing odors. And baking soda, you know, it's kind of like the triple threat. It, it deodorizes, it whitens, and it is also a mild abrasive. So you guys know I talk about baking soda all the time, but some really neat odor absorbing applications for it include putting it into your spice cupboard, I found that to be really effective and it's so easy and inexpensive to do. And the same thing for the fridge. You're always told to change out your box of baking soda four times a year. You probably don't do it, but even a couple times a year is great because baking soda helps take out those bad odors and smells from your fridge and just neutralize everything so things don't get weird when you go for a snack. One of the things that Chad remembers most from his childhood in and around holiday time was the smell of baking cookies. Now, this is not something that's exclusive to holiday time. In fact, real estate agents use this trick all the time. They put out a sheet of cookies, they bake it, and then the whole place that they're trying to smell, regardless of what its scent signature was, starts to smell like cookies. If you wanna make your house smell great, a really easy way to do it is to just bake cookies and we kind of cheated. We just used a roll from the grocery store for this and Chad loved it because he kind of likes to eat cookie batter. And if all else fails, simply refer to this tip that was rated the most popular comment on a previous video we did on a similar topic. And that is, and I'm gonna be gender neutral here, to remove your spouse, your children, and your pets, and just live alone. Just let them park in a camper on your driveway and you take the house and enjoy the clean. Well, now you know how to make your home smell amazing. And I hope that these tips and ideas will help you design the scent of your dreams for your home. And that brings me to this week's comment question, which is, if you could have your home smell like anything, what would that smell be? Would it be Indonesian orchids? Would it be fresh sausages from the market? Would it be chocolate chip cookies? I would love to know. For me, the smell that I love is a combination, I know this might sound a little strange, but it's a combination of vanilla, lemon, and rosemary. It's like my favorite thing to do as a stovetop simmer. It just hits different, my friends. But generally speaking, I like my house to smell like nothing, but enough from me. I'd love to know in the comments what you would love your home to smell like. Now that your home smells great, you can probably get rid of a few things in there, which is why you should totally check out our how to declutter 
playlist. If you want to support the Clean My Space channel, there are a couple of ways that you can do that. Of course, you can do so by subscribing and you can also check out makersclean.com, which is where we sell all of our premium microfiber cleaning cloths and more. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.